This is the Get a Life Podcast. X Cult Conversations. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Get a Life X Cult Conversations. Um, we have some new people that have been added to our team to help us out. And we are going to introduce you to some ladies from the UK that are going to also bring in some stories from overseas. So take it away, ladies. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Get A Life podcast from the UK. Um, I'm here with my friends Anne Hamilton, who you've seen on the podcast before, and also Ros Atmore, who you've also seen on the Get A Life podcast before, and our old friend and Carmen Drever, who's done many of these podcasts before. So today we've got a special guest with us, and I'll leave it to Ros to introduce our guest. Hello, everyone. Um, and our special guest tonight is... John Spinks. <laughs> Hi, John. Hello. Hello, John. Hello, Hello John. Hello. What, what, what's this all about? <laughs> about did, brethren, did, didn't you used to belong to Exclusive Brethren or something? I, I did. But it, it, it's, it's in the past. I've forgotten all about it. So. Ah, <laughs> positive then. <laughs> we need your memory tonight. Yeah. <laughs> So, John, we, we, we've asked you on because you've written a very good book called Cult Escape, which I think most of us on here have read. Mm. Um, so I just wondered if you'd mind telling us what led up to writing that book, how you left the Brethren. Yeah, sure. Yeah, well, uh, I was I was born into the exclusive Brethren, 1966. And uh, for the next 22 years, it was my normal life. Um, very unusual compared to my uh, friends at school and most people in this good world. But um, yeah, 11 meetings a week was the norm um, and uh, controlled by many, many laws and rules and regulations. Um, religious groups that control people uh, on a continuum of how much they control and some are called high demand groups. Maybe you can get mid demand groups, but the one, the exclusive brethren was a high demand group. And so uh, our lives were controlled, um, I would say 95%. Mm. Uh, I would say that the suicide cults, they control people's lives 100%. So I'd say this is, 90, in my opinion, 95%. And so um, we, we, uh, my life was controlled where I couldn't go, where I couldn't eat, where I couldn't sleep, um, what length I couldn't cut my hair, um, <laughs> who I couldn't marry um what type of house i couldn't live in what uh drains couldn't be shared with the neighbors uh a whole host of uh, rules and regulations that completely controlled me and of course growing up it was all i knew and mm. so it, it was uh the norm but uh, i got to the age of 18 and i i was driving and i was driving i was able to get out a bit more than uh, i had been and i, I started seeing uh, things um, and seeing, meeting people and realising that they're not sort of evil monsters that I've been brought up to believe, that they're a lot, a lot, there's a lot of love in this world. And I started desiring the, the wicked things uh, like uh, football matches and restaurants and, and, and uh, good music, uh, things which I've been brought up to believe were uh, of the devil and wicked. And, uh, and over a period of the next four years, uh, I started to realize how utterly boring these 11 meetings were to me and i wanted to be out in the fresh air experiencing you know the normal things in life and uh, it got to a point whereby i felt i was a rope in the tug of war because it was impossible for me to leave because it would mean potentially never seeing my parents again who i loved and, mm -hmm. and love and but on the other side of the cut of, of the rope was the bright lights of the city of which i've been told were so evil and wicked and yet the, the sheer boredom was, was driving me uh, a wedge. And um, when I was 22, it was on my birthday, actually. Mm. I was looking out my bedroom window, feeling down. And I saw these two drunks walking by below. And I thought, they're having a good life, and I'm not. And in that moment, I realized in 10 years' time, I was going to be 32. I was good at maths. And <laughs> I was going to have 10 years of misery, guaranteed. 
Yeah. Just like I've been having over the, the previous four years. And there's only one person that could do anything about it. I hadn't told anybody how I'd been feeling in those four years. And that one person, of course, was me. And I said, that's it. I am out of here. And with that in my mind, I left. It took me 100 days to get um, uh, accommodation, to get a phone line in from a business and to um, transfer my life over. And after 100 days, I left. And uh, because I couldn't just walk away from my parents, it was just too painful. I uh, made up a little uh, lie and I said I'd been with a woman. Shock horror. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and so my dad told the priests and they had a meeting that night. And my dad phoned me up the next day with, with the news that they'd only shut me up. And I thought, oh, no, you know, that didn't work. So I said, well, actually, it was more than one woman. And so we went back to the priests and they had the next meeting. <laughs> and uh, I, I was sitting there watching my, my television uh, one evening. And the priest, uh, Raymond T from Liverpool, he phoned me up in the evening. Uh, he was disturbing me, actually, because I was watching football. Uh, Liverpool versus Arsenal in the semi-final of the League Cup. Which Very dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he said, we had the meeting and uh, we've, we've drawn from you. And I said, I'm just busy at the moment. I've got to go. Goodbye. Uh, and that was the last I heard from them. And wow. So, yeah, so that, that was sort of how, that was the moment, the epiphany moment, which got me out of mm. that four years of uh, torment, really. Uh, it got me off the fence. It was the realisation that I was heading for, you know, a life of misery and I did something about it. So you say it to, this is quite interesting because I'm thinking of um, people inside that might be considering to make that move you took when you were 22 and they might have that light bulb moment that you had when you saw those two drunks <laughs> and think the, the life I've got is not the life I want and I can't, don't want to be in 10 years. But then you've got to execute that decision mm. and did you actively plan how to do it with you was it a conscious plan because sometimes when you leave it gets sprung on you some people are able to actively plan it's different did you actively then set about making a almost calculated but i mean that in a good way plan to leave yes i did um I, I, from that moment um i realized looking back my values shifted and my value for freedom became more important than a life of misery yeah. and uh, and so yeah to do that I had to get my accommodation of course I didn't want to be living on the street mm. and uh, I had a self-employed business at the time so I had to get a phone line in and uh, yeah I was 22 I knew nothing about the big bad world or the big good, good world and uh, and so I had to do, do it myself and <clears throat> uh, I didn't have the internet no. I didn't have a mobile phone or computer whereas today there's lots of resources and lots of stories of people who have left. And if you're watching this and you are bored, shitless, excuse the language, <laughs> uh, then you, you might be wondering, you know, uh, how on earth could you get out? Well, you know what? It's easy. You can do. The worst, the hardest bit is the emotional uh, bit of uh, leaving everybody and you behind. But you've got to come to terms with that and you've got to make a decision. You know, what are you going to do? Are you going to um, Are you going to be a slave? Are you going to be allow yourself to be controlled? Is that loving yourself? Are they loving you? Or are you going to pursue freedom uh, uh, and go for it? And so, yeah, there's lots of resources out there. And when I, you mentioned the book, when I uh, turned 50, I know you, you're amazed at how I could look that uh, old. Has that happened yet, John? <laughs> no, yeah. You did say you were born in 66. So yeah, we'd already life. worked it out, we, didn't we? we? Done the math, <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> this is what happens, you see, when, when you leave, when you pursue freedom, you know, it takes years off you. I recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, about six or seven years ago, I woke up one morning and I thought, uh, <clears throat> I, I'm free. I've been free for thir maybe 30 years. And uh, <clears throat> it's okay for me, but there are people there who are trapped in religious cults, people who are <clears throat> between a rock and a hard place, people who are terrified of losing their family, their husbands, their wives, their children, uh, their grandparents, etc. And I, I thought, if I don't write the story, I feel a bit mean. And so I decided to write it. And it took me three years to, to write this book, mm. Cult Escape, which uh, I'm not actually plugging it. You don't have to buy it uh, because you can get it free on Amazon Unlimited. Mm as an ebook, mm. or it's on YouTube, uh, maybe the, the link will be below later, mm. where uh, I've recorded the chapters 
on YouTube, so you can listen to that free if you want to. Okay. And, and um, as I was writing the book, I realised that I, I realised that the main problem with the exclusive brethren and with religious cults. There's many problems, but but the main one is that they destroy families. You know, if people want to wear silly hats and and go to meetings and um, not go to restaurants and even not have a television, and if they want to live in detached houses and cut, cut gaps around the walls so they're separate from the neighbours, you know, if they want to have those sort of little peripheral things, that's their choice, isn't it? But yeah. destroying families now, now. No, that, that you can't do that in society. But the trouble is that at the moment they can because it's it's legal, isn't it, to coercively control people? Yeah. Which I know, Jackie, you're you're. <laughs> you might get me on my soapbox, John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting, is it? Because I think every one of us on this call has lost family and some more than others. I mean, Anne, I know we all know your story, and all of us have lost family, either immediate or extended. And I've often asked myself, you kind of learn to live with that. But actually, John, you mentioned about you loved your parents. So when you first left, how did you cope with that, you know, effectively turning your back on two people who, I mean, it's quite an emotional subject, but I know you touched on it in your book. How did you cope with that in those early days of leaving? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what happened. I wrote this in the book. I, I um, On that morning of November the 7th, the 1988, yeah. Uh, it was the most saddest moment of my life because I made my, I made my mother cry and I'd never done that before. I love them. Mm. Uh, I went to my accommodation. I actually cried for three hours nonstop. Mm. Uh, and, and looking back um, and learning a bit of psychology, I realised that I went through what's known as the five stages of death. Mm. Uh, I, I went through five stages uh, very quickly. Uh, the first one was what was... Um, mm. What's the first one? Blake, not, I, 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 I know there's grief, there's anger, there's denial, but I'm not sure. And, and denial, so that's there. right. Yes, I went yes. into the denial. I, thought, I can't believe I've done this. I can't believe yeah. this actually happened. I just do not yes. believe that I'm sitting here and I have left my, I've left the past behind. Mm. And then it went into anger. And I thought, how dare, mm. how dare they separate, how dare they control my parents to coercively control them into, they're not allowed to have anything to do with me, maybe for the rest of my life. How dare they? And then it went into blame, and and I, and I blamed them, and I blamed myself. I went through that extreme emotion, and then it mm. went into depression, mm. and that was very bad, uh, very low. And at the end of the depression, well, at the end of the three hours, I remember thinking to myself, you know what, I don't like this emotion. It's pretty crap. I'm going to go to the video shop uh, and become a member and get some comedy videos. And I went, and I got Laurel and Hardy and Faulty Towers. <laughs> <laughs> I took them home. They made me laugh, and I've been laughing ever since. Yeah, uh, and, 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 and so that, that actually is my, you know, maybe unusual way of handling that that mm. traumatic experience of coming to terms. But in the back of my mind, I also knew that there is a remote chance that they could come out with a burden sometime. Mm. Uh, and the sort of I held on to that. Now they they didn't. They haven't done. Mm. My mum uh, passed uh, six years ago. My dad's still mm. alive. Mm. So uh, he he might well one day, but mm. yeah, that's all to him. And and how has over the years what has your contact with them been like? Well, they, they there's a culture in the brethren. They may not they may not they may deny this, but the culture is that they don't really have anything to do with the relatives. Certainly not in a normal way. Mm. So, for example, they wouldn't go shopping. They wouldn't go. They wouldn't eat with you. They wouldn't drink with you. They wouldn't invite you around. They wouldn't come around to your house. They, they wouldn't share their birthdays, weddings and funerals. Mm. In fact, my aunt died uh, a few months ago and I wasn't told. Mm. Uh, I, had to, I found out by accident. Uh, and so they don't share their life with you. Uh, and so, but every six months, I sort of phone my dad up and ask him how he is and my brother as well. So uh, as I've said to them, my door is wide open for them any time they want. Mm. I'm not have not closed the door on them uh, and so uh, the culture is though that they don't contact me which is why my brother hasn't contacted me in you know 34 years mm. because they're they are controlled coercively controlled not to as we know yeah and I think that's quite interesting because I, I I think everyone here would agree with me our door is never shut no to never. our family I mean I know Anne if you're 
children contacted Absolutely. you, your arms would be wide open. And Absolutely. I'm sure, Roz, you've got family that you would feel exactly the same about. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. It, it's not a case of us. Th th there's always an accusation hurled at ex-leavers that you chose to leave. And the inference yeah. of that is when we chose to leave, we knew the consequences. But that doesn't make the consequences right, does it? No, we didn't make the rules, did we? No, we didn't. We didn't put them in place. We didn't choose um, to abide by those rules. They did. <coughs> they yeah. Them. yeah. Yeah. It dawned on me as I was writing the book, and I, and I wrote this down. It wasn't those who left who wanted their family split. It was those who remain, who remained, and who remain there, who value the laws of their leader higher than their children and their husbands and their wives. Yeah, uh, and so we didn't. I did not want my family to be split at all, <clears throat> and I'm not split from them, from as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and it's interesting, isn't it? Because a lot of it is that insidious um, coercion that you've referred to, John. And I know that's something you've looked into. Um, perhaps you could tell us a bit more about that—the sort of group coercion that I know you and I both perceive to be a problem. <laughs> Yeah, well, coerced control is illegal domestically uh, since mm. 2015. The government got them act together at last with Finally, that. yeah. But, but coercive control in groups is legal. And so uh, anybody, if they've got enough um, influence, can start up a group. They can um, put the fear into people to control them. They, they can coercively can control them. They, they can get them to sign, sign their money over if they die their will over. Uh, that, that get rid of uh, to um, have nothing more to do with their children, husbands, or wives, mm. and they can coercively control them with all the coercive rules which apply to domestic. They can do that legally, uh, and it, and they can get away with it, which is what's happening today. Uh, mm. And so, what we're looking for, and what I believe what will happen shortly, soon, well, what will happen soon, is that coercive control will be illegal for religious groups, and then that's going to be uh, very very expensive for them. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think you're right. Um, sorry, Anne, did you want to say something? I, no, no, I, I, uh, I was just going to say, uh, it's it's almost more serious than the domestic coercive yeah. control because there's so many people affected, not just people within that group, but people like ourselves that, you know, it's caused so many casualties yes. everywhere. <clears throat> it's yeah. not just within the group. Um. Yeah, the the sooner yeah, the sooner the law gets changed, the better. Uh, I have I have spoken as you know, Jackie. I've spoken yeah. to my local MP, but it's sometimes yeah. like <laughs> it's, difficult. Yeah. It's very difficult. I mean, on that score, as you know. Um, <clears throat> the charity called the Family Survival Trust, which I know you've had some dealings with, and here in the UK have, have, have issued a full report about that and are calling for um, the government to change the law. So how they broke it down, which I thought was quite interesting, is the actual coercive behaviour is stipulated in law, and it's things like telling people who you can and can't be friends with, telling people um, when they can go out and when they can't go out, telling them where to live, taking their phones off them, restricting their money, all those things things that are perceived as coercive behaviour, which I think we've all been subjected to from the circumstances we come from. Um, and the result of that behaviour happens in groups. And the Family Survival Trust are actually launching um, a big campaign this year to try and get government to look at this and make it illegal from groups not just religious groups because there's sort of all sorts of groups that mm. there's political groups and so on that pull people in and then they just find they can't get out and they end up being cut off from family and so on and if that law change went through i think it will be very interesting results yeah it'll be very mm. interesting because it would basically make the sort of behavior that your parents, John, and all our families have been subject to, illegal. Mm. And at the moment, if we wanted to do anything about it legally, it would be under the coercive control laws, it would be a case of you, John, having to take your father to court, which yeah. you're not going to do, are you? <laughs> you're yeah. not going to do no, on a never. personal scale because you know it's not him. <clears throat> it's something outside of him that's controlling him to 
behave and you know in, in the way he does towards you yeah well when i wrote the book i've got a chapter on coercive control and there's yeah. 10 major points for the domestic coercive control and uh, when i was there nine out of ten of those were directly controlling my life yeah you know and um yeah, I, I'd like to have a look, give it, have, say a little word to Bruce Hales if you're watching right now. But Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. My, my dad and my brother Bruce have not been in touch with me much over these years, you know, over three decades actually. And you were responsible for coercively controlling them. And I'm going to ask you right now to stop it. Mm. Stop what you're doing. If I was talking to Vladimir Putin, I'd say the same thing. Stop what you're doing. You're destroying mm -hmm. families. You're killing them. You're not killing them like Putin is with bullets and with missiles and shells. You're killing them slowly because while they're alive, they're not allowed to see their loved ones, their mm -hmm. children. You've got children, haven't you? How would you like it if uh, someone controlled somebody whereby your children couldn't see you? How would you feel? Come on, Bruce. Get a life. Thank you, John. <laughs> You've echoed what a lot of us us feel um, in in saying that to him. Um, maybe, maybe we should say a collective amen to that. Uh, do you know, yeah, <laughs> I can feel it rising. Yeah, a little amen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just thought, I'm not sure that all our listeners would get that one. <laughs> no, no. So perhaps we better explain that one. At the end of every preaching, we always had to say amen, didn't we? Is that right? It's a long time since I've been in a meeting. Some of you have been in a meeting more recently than me, but a brethren meeting. Mm. Um <laughs> But, or, yeah. or or when there was uh, assembly discipline, you know, if there was yes. anybody being shut up or anybody being withdrawn from, the yeah. whole room had to say amen to that, didn't they? Yeah. 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 Gosh, yes, I've forgotten that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. is. So have you had, what sort of reaction have you had to your book, John? Because, you know, there's the, we know the brethren don't like, having things publicised about their behaviour and stories being told, but we also know that everybody has a right to tell their personal story. Nobody can stop them doing that. And I know, Anne, you're working on a book as well. Yeah. Have you had any repercussions? Have you, has anybody said anything? When I was writing it, I I, I um, put the book cover uh, on, on, on the Facebook group, which I know yes. the brethren look at. Yes. And I was asking uh, what, what, you know, what, what, do, you, what do you think should, should I do it this colour, this colour sort of thing? I think something like that. Mm. Uh, and so, so they got to know that I was writing a book and I got three phone calls from the brethren. Wow. And wow. They, they said, you must not publish that book. And I said to them, why not? Because I'm only writing about the life that I was brought up in. Yes. Of which you were brought up in, which you agree with. Yeah, you know, I know your man of God turns the corner, turns corners and changes <laughs> rules, but by well, one day you get kicked out and lose your family for having a mobile phone. But then yeah. 15 years later, the priests phone up people on their mobile phone. So we, we know all that goes on. But 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 the the laws that I was under, you agree with them. So, and also, uh, because I'm painting a picture of what goes on then there may be people who read the book who may think, oh, I want to come under that coercive control, and maybe they'll join you. <laughs> and have more yeah. and so, uh, it could Is be it a way of drive, proclaiming the glad tidings, John? <laughs> Absolutely. It could be a recruitment Sorry. drive. And, and if you get members and they start donating, then, you know, we could negotiate <laughs> some terms and conditions, a uh, commission maybe. <laughs> and so um, th th I was told three times, not two, but since then I haven't heard anything from heard them anything. except a few weeks ago oh, and yes. that was that i i phoned up my younger brother he will still love you stephen always will mm -hmm. uh, and uh, i said would you like to see my daughter uh, and he basically fudged it and said no uh, because my daughter has never been in the exclusive so she was born out of the brethren and has had a right, yes. more balanced upbringing i assume <laughs> <laughs> a, a very different status in their eyes. Yes. Uh, and 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 he said, um, uh, I said, oh, um, that's right. He and then he mentioned that my aunt had died two weeks before, and I said, what? I said, why didn't you tell me? Yeah. And he said, because you've written a book about us. And uh, and I said, yes, but a book about your rules. Well, you know what's wrong with that? They're, they're your rules. And he said, uh, it's very offensive 
And I said, how can it be offensive when I'm writing about the rules that your men of God put me under, which they put you under? And he said, he actually said, I never want to speak to you again, uh, which was sad to hear that uh, because he's never said anything like that before. And, and so uh, he must have got to hear about the book. Uh, I, didn't, I doubt if he's read it. No. If you want it, Steve, I'll, I'll send you a copy. No problem. I was say, yeah. Pop, and, pop uh, one through his letterbox. <laughs> yeah, but, but um, I, I said, and in fact, when I had the phone call, the three phone calls when I was writing the book, uh, I said, "Well, why? What? What are you ashamed of? Mm. Well, why don't you want the public to hear what goes on uh, and what uh, in your group? You know, uh, I thought if you believe God is instructing your leader to tell you rules and regulations and laws and stipulations and how to how to." Uh, how to uh, guide people's life, I would say the word control, but why would you be ashamed of what your your God and your mm. man of God is trying to do? Uh, and of course, they had no answers to that. Mm. Mm. No, because there isn't, there isn't an answer, is there? No, there isn't an answer. And I think, I mean, I, I don't know your brother, but I think sometimes the reasons why they don't want to speak to you is because you've just made them, you've hit the nail on the head and made them feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I've experienced a similar thing with my brother. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you, if you, they don't have the answers. So the easiest way says, well, I don't want to speak to you because you've written a book. Yeah. 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 To avoid it's like, it's like when you, avoid. when you put, when you put any, any article in the news or anything like that. Yeah. I remember the first one, you remember that was in the time. Yes. And uh, I got a phone call from my brother-in-law saying, oh, you know, you, you'll lose all contact. I said, I've lost it anyway. Yeah. I can't lose any more than I've lost, you know. Yeah. I mean, there's two things to that. A, it is very wrong to use family as emotional blackmail for what you do and don't do. I mean, that that is frankly yeah. wrong, which is what they're doing, essentially. Yeah. And secondly, um, with my brother, it was quite interesting because I left a long time ago and had nothing to do with brethren or ex-brethren or anything and he still had no contact with us. So to say yeah. now I'm reluctant to talk to you because you speak out and you um, and everything and, and what you've done, I had the same wording actually, John, is very upsetting. Um, same wording is doesn't ring true because what about the 25 years before that when you never had any contact yeah. with me and I didn't speak a word? Yeah. So... Um, mm. I, I think it must make them feel uncomfortable, and I don't know if that's what you thought about your brother when you spoke to him recently, John. Yes, uh, I mean, there's no communication. It, it's a, it's a one-way communication, you know. Yeah. Um, the, the only other real communication I have had was in was it 2003 when there, were, <laughs> there was what they they call the review. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and and uh, I got an astonishing phone call from my dad, who said. Um, he said, John, <clears throat> um, John uh, Bruce Hales has told us that uh, we have missed the spirit of the gospel and we could have been in contact with you all through the, all over these years. Uh, and, and we did not, uh, we misunderstood his father, who, who was John Hales, who, who was the, the man of God before the current yeah. Bruce Hales. And I said, wow, I said, so... Uh, and he said, and he, he apologised. He said, you know, we're, we're we're repenting about it. So I so I said, can I come and see you then? He goes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and and so I went round um, and I saw my dad and mum, and um, uh, it was mostly about the weather, you know. So and uh, how long had it been since you'd seen them in two thousand and three? When was the last time you saw them before that? Uh, Nineteen eighty-eight. So for, uh, fifteen. Ooh. years. Wow, uh, and so uh, it, it wasn't a very deep conversation, but but and they weren't allowed to eat or drink with me in the room, mm. but but um, they gave me something to eat and drink, I think, and um, and once a month for six for, for six uh, months, so six times I went and I took my daughter as well, uh, who they had never seen. Mm. Uh, she she was their first grandchild, and they weren't allowed to be there at the, you know, at the birth and celebrate her birthdays or even see her. Such was the coercive control. Mm. Um, incidentally, I was telling a lady about this um, who asked me, uh, a grandmother, and she started crying. This was a, a lady I was working with. Uh, and, and I said, why are you crying? She said, because she knows that 
as a grandmother herself, for any grandmother not to see their grandchild and to hold their first grandchild uh, is something of which deep, deep down, it, it, it would be really upsetting. And, and she really felt for my mother and was, you know, weeping for her. Mm. So anyway, um, so for for six times, uh, I, I went once a month. On, on the seventh time, my dad started saying, well, I'm busy, I'm shopping, et cetera, et cetera. And after about f- a few weeks of him knocking me back all the time, I said, hey, Dad, are you still allowed to see me? Mm. My amazement, he said, no. I said, what? I said, but you said that the man of God said that you, you that you had missed the spirit of the, of the gospel, and and that that you'd misunderstood the matter that John Hales. And he said to me, it was all just to try and make you to come back. Wow! So he at least he was honest with his answer there. At least he was honest with me. Yeah, he, he's a very honest man, my dad. Yeah. Uh, and so he he told me that, and uh, I was quite amazed that that they. That, that system can fall into that depravity yeah. of, of of you could say winding people up you know getting uh children to see them and of course to say that it was something of which was a complete misunderstanding and all this crap mm. about missing the spirit of the gospel gospel mm. <laughs> I thought yeah. gospel was good news yeah <laughs> it's emotional blackmail again isn't it it's emotional blackmail again yeah yes. i mean it's the amount of people that were in hard times in bad state and actually yeah. did go back because of it and then you know life goes awry and well we've got you now mm. so so Ros, presumably and you and you were in at the time of the review um, yeah, it was, yeah carmen and i and john obviously weren't and we got contacted as well so this was the whole motivation behind it was it so was it shortly oh, yeah. after bruce came into power yeah yeah oh it was yeah. massive i mean i remember um my my in-laws yeah um uh he had a my father-in-law had a sister who'd left in the 60s well his parents had left in the 60s mm. uh, but they had already died but out of the blue i mean she hadn't seen her brother or anything to do with him for 40 years mm. or 30 something years and suddenly they were looking everywhere for her and eventually traced her and went to her house and it just really messed with her head and then they kept going to see her and they kept going to see her and then realized well she was never going to go back i mean she had no mm. intention of that and they just stopped going to see her. And it just, you're left high and dry. You grieve almost so all over again, don't you? And and so did so did my ex-father-in-law. Yeah. Grieve yeah. all over again. Because I don't think he ever, he, it was only him and his sister. And I don't think he ever got over his parents leaving. Mm. And mm. his sister leaving. And, and, he, and he was all excited about this, you know. And then suddenly we were told, yes. no. Yeah. Same as my mum. Go on, Ross. Same as my mum. She had all my um, siblings, you know, my brothers and sisters, um, three sisters all contacted, and each time the priest would come back and say, oh, no, they don't want anything to do with us. Oh, no, you know, they shut the door in our face. No, no. I mean, talk about rubbing salt in a wound. Mm. All... Like all her hopes that you know everyone was going to come back, it was all going to be happy families again. Mm. It, was, and, it was awful. And then once they realised mm. that actually you're quite settled and happy in the life you've made, that was it. Yeah. Wash our hands again. Somebody once, a, a, an ex member of many years, once described the review to me. It felt like they were coming to wash their hands in my sink. And I thought that was a good way to put it. You know, it, it, yeah. it the description was that he weren't coming with a genuine desire, although it was lovely. We had the same thing. We saw um, my husband saw his parents again after 27 years. I saw my brother. Uh, my mother saw her son. But it all came to nothing. And there was all the apology for how you were treated, like you had, John. You know, it was wrong and so on and so forth. Um, and then the door slammed shut. And that was exactly like they were absolving their consciences. You're not coming back. That's it. The door comes down again. And that sure messes with your head again, does it? Or can do. Yeah. 
I just wonder, um, Carmen, what, what's it, what was the review like for you? What were you told? I'll say in, in, in the another country, yeah. Well, I was inside at the time of the review, okay, um, so, but yeah. not going to meeting. Right. <laughs> so, oh. Yeah, I had the best of both worlds. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You you were causing the, yeah, you were causing havoc. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> but, but but were they told because we we sometimes find there's a variation yeah. about how different countries That's within the brethren yeah. react to the latest ministry, whatever that might be. So do you think it was different in the States? Do you have much? No, knowledge? it was almost exactly the same wording and they did almost exactly the same things. Yeah. Um the yeah. only thing I had the advantage of of they did it to my brothers and my mom mm -hmm. and at that point um there was a will that was still up in the air so right. when they called me um they said we have taken back what we did to your brothers and so in that moment i was like okay so if you were wrong um there's a will still hanging out there <laughs> i would assume you're gonna put that right right <laughs> and did they and in that one case they did Okay. Yeah. Right right time, right place. Right time, yeah. right, place. right place. You know, it yeah. doesn't happen like that very often. But, it doesn't, but yeah. You know, it, they I think that's why they never put it in writing mm. is because they knew there would be so many cases of that. Mm. You know, where they said, Oh, we were wrong, we take it back, you know. Mm. Then you need to fix some other crap that you did too. Yeah. 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 I mean I, uh, sorry, John, go on. So in the UK, Carmen, that would be called a Bushy's bonus. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Good. Yeah, that's a very good one. Yeah, remember that one. But but I can remember in the view having a letter from um a girl that was a very good friend of mine when we were growing up, out of the blue with photos of her children. And I was so pleased to get it. And I wrote back to her because in it she said, you know, it'd be nice to keep in touch and ties should never have been broken were her words. So I wrote back to her and sent pictures of my girls and everything else and um didn't hear a word. That was it. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> you have to oh, know. It was, it was so confusing for those inside as well as those outside. Mm. You yeah. know, like I say, there was people getting hope. I mean, my dad had great hopes of seeing his sister again. And, yes. But actually, thankfully, she said, I don't want anything to do with you. Mm. Uh, you know, I'm too old now and it, it's been too long and you washed your hands off me. No. Yeah. And and you know, she was which which is sort of good in that she did stand up to them. Yes. But he had again he he did have all this hope, you know, all this excitement of oh I'm gonna see Mary again, you know. Yeah. 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 So, so it wasn't you know, it was inside as well. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So I wonder can't... sometimes when we meet people, um, like you said, you met your brother, and um, they're so untaught in there. Um, you know, so lack of Bible study, so lack yeah. of knowledge about the Bible. I wonder sometimes when we meet them, if they're intimidated and that's why they don't want to engage with us. Mm -hmm. I think you're probably right. Um, yeah. It's it, it, a conversation with somebody inside for it to work kind of has to be on their terms. Yeah. If you know yeah. what I mean. Um, and it's yeah. not. Um, yeah. I remember a very interesting conversation I had with my brother around the time of the review because his daughters are a similar age to my daughters, to our daughters. Um, so they're obviously first cousins, but they've never met. And I remember I met my brother around the time of the review and I asked him whether the girls could meet because I thought it'd be nice. And his actual reply was, um, yes, we'll have to think about that because I'm just not too sure how far we should go. And you could tell straight away what, what he was worried about was, yeah. you know, they might get on. They might actually yeah. quite enjoy each other's yeah. company. And they were in their sort of early mid-teens then. We really couldn't have that, could we? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Funny, funny you should say that because I've experienced that even since I've left myself. Yes. That uh, when I had did have contact with my children, they struggled because... I was just normal. I was still mom. Mm. And they wanted yeah. to almost think of me as this evil, awful person. And yeah. the conversation started to flow and suddenly they got scared. Yeah. And 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 I think certainly for, for some of my children, 
it was easier for them to cut me off than to see me as me still. Yes. They'd rather cut me off almost and believe all the lies and all the stuff that I'm evil. Yeah. It's almost easier for them. And when they don't see you or have contact with you, it's easier to believe that. Yeah, absolutely. Because there's, there's nothing to diffuse it. No. Um, I wanted to touch on something you said, John, um, that probably is quite a tough subject. You mentioned about somebody you were speaking to who, as a grandmother, said, you know, I can't imagine that. And I know this is something that's very hurtful to Anne. So Anne, forgive me if it does upset you. I've recently become a grandmother. I, I don't know. Are you a grandmother, Carmen? Yep. Seven yeah. times over. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, you've you got streets on me. Ros, I'm assuming you're you're not a grandmother yet. <laughs> But no, not quite. <laughs> not quite. <laughs> no, not <laughs> but to go back, in all seriousness, it is it is a very precious thing, and legally, again, grandparents do have <clears throat> rights. So the effect of families—it's not just fathers and sons, but it's generations. And I know, mm. Anne, for you, it's extremely difficult because you've quite openly said you don't know how many grandchildren you've got. You haven't seen them. It's... Well, it, I'd, I'd just like to say, interestingly, yeah, since that article went out, okay, um, obviously I, I wouldn't name any name. Well, I don't even know the person's name, but somebody from the inside has sent me all the photographs oh. of my grandchildren. Oh, oh don't now! I'm um, going to get emotional. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So that is. I've got. I, I've got five grandchildren. Oh. Mm. Wow. And you've now got recent photos of them. Yeah, and of my children and of my parents. Yeah. And I don't think the powers that control the brethren inside realise how precious, how much it means to you just to have a photo. Oh. Mm. It's a lifeline <laughs> and it raises your hope. And I think to try and get across to people that have never been in the brethren that this happens and it happens right here in what is supposed to be a civilised Western country, not just the UK, but the States and New Zealand yeah, yeah. and Australia and Canada. And you've got this level of heart and harm, harm, harm and hurt continuing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, like everybody, I just hope it will change one day. Mm. Yeah. You see, you see, I... Sorry, John. Sorry. Sorry, Dan. Go on, John. No, no, <laughs> carry on. You're our guest, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You get so, final say. <laughs> don't let the woman take over. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> uh, you mentioned the powers, uh, Jackie. Yeah. Uh, and maybe a slip of your tongue, because mm. the amazing thing is there's no powers in there. There's only no. one power. no. And a lot of people I've spoken to over the decades uh, can't get their head around this, no. that there's only one person who controls yeah. everything, literally. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, everybody literally in, they're, they're sort of uh, facilitators or leaders in the localities, but yes. they all submit to one person. Yes, I, I agree with you. I was choosing my words euphemistically, <laughs> cautiously, <laughs> but I totally agree with you. There is one yeah. power. <laughs> Yeah. But, but, you know, the control and the separation uh, of mm. uh, husbands and wives and mm. uh, grandparents and grandchildren and uh, brothers and sisters uh, is only happening because of one man. Uh, and if he if he if if he was to change the yeah. rules, mm. if he was to uh, pretend like he does that God has turned another corner, mm. um, if he was to realize that he can make a lot more money if he opens the doors a bit wider mm. and changes his policies. <laughs> You know, and that's a possibility because I know I know uh, making a lot of money is what they're very interested in, and uh, I, I would suggest I would suggest if you're listening that you can make a lot more money. You know, if if you ditch a lot of your religious stuff, which isn't really of any value, let's face it. Mm. You know, you, you, well, you and we really... can we can even come up with a scripture to back it. You know, there's a scripture out there that says, "What God puts together, let no man tear it apart." So exactly. we can even find in the Bible. 
a directive for him to fall back on if 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 he needs a scripture because i kind of doubt he's he's reading them all but that one seems to <laughs> yes yeah. that one seems to have slipped out of his bible but if he put it back in there there's yeah. actually a scriptural basis to do just what you exactly asked him to do mm. absolutely and and one of the things that holds probably only a small fraction of the of the brethren is is what they were called the, the doctrinal matters Mm. Because I reckon that most of them, uh, as I when I was in, don't really, didn't really understand the doctrines and what the Bible says, and you could say the theology behind it. No. Uh, because uh, I'm here to tell you that that, that well, if, if if you're in the brethren and you're watching this, that the interpretation of the Bible it, it is absolutely so way off the mark mm. that that instead of bringing unity, love, and joy and peace, it's bringing fear, destruction, uh, and a torment to, to yeah. thousands upon thousands of people. You know, uh, I think the Bible says that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what your group has been doing uh, since, since for, for, for many, many decades. And there's something which amazed me when I first heard about it, uh, which you, you, um, if your brethren, if your brethren are watching this, you may never have heard this before. Uh, I'll just start off quickly by saying that I was once uh, came out of a meeting, Alison Rose, in Liverpool. I was about 12, and for some reason, I had this funny thought. I thought. Uh, there's only the Catholics, the Protestants, the Baptists, the Methodists, and us, and 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 and, and so those four are clearly wrong, you know, because we've got the man of God and we've got mm. the right interpretation of the Bible. Mm. You know, something listed on the internet here's a fact. Go and check it out yourself, because most of you have got the internet now. There's over forty thousand religious denominations in the world. Mm. Forty thousand, yeah. uh, and every single one of them has. They all have one thing in common, like you. They all believe they are the right one. Mm, yeah. And I once said to these Jehovah's Witnesses on the street, uh, <laughs> when I told them this, I said, I was standing next to a book bookmakers, and I said, see the bookies over there? I could go in there now. And the odds of you being the right religion is 40,000 to one. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and they, they haven't realised that. No. It's an absolute fallacy yeah. and a farce to think that they could be the right one when yeah. there's thousands upon thousands of interpretations of the Bible. Anyway. Just, just no, it's, it, it's absolutely true. And um, it's if you think about it logically, wasn't it in, I, I think, um, um, in the Sydney seminar, they said something about the brethren being 0.000, I can't remember the actual, but a, a very, very small percentage of the world population, and we are chosen. Well, if God was an all loving, you know, encompassing God, why has he selected 0.000000 of the world population <laughs> to be the chosen ones? Um, it, it logically it doesn't make any sense, does it? No. It just doesn't. It, you know, to any brethren listening, just think about it logically. If the God is you believe in is the God that loves everybody and forgives everybody and accepts people just the way they are, mm. how is it there's this minute little bit of the population that incidentally is causing so much havoc in people's lives? Why would he just choose those to be the special ones? Yeah, I remember. I remember my my sister saying to me when I left. She said, "She said, do you honestly think that fifty five thousand people are wrong and you're right?" I said, "Hang on, there's a few more than fifty five thousand in this world." <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, do you honestly think fifty five thousand people are right and however many million are wrong? <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It was only me that was wrong, though. But, That's only their wrong. world. That's yeah. their world, isn't it? It yeah, is literally yeah, exactly. their world. They have you're no right, God. Other yeah you're right i think it's because they the, the insular environment the community they live in mm. they don't they don't allow themselves or they aren't allowed i don't know which it is to see beyond that so you're right mm. yeah well uh, yeah certainly uh, it's there when I, even when i left it was i didn't i couldn't never saw the big picture no you know it, no. it, it took me it took me quite a while to see the big picture that there's so much more out here than just them. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think yeah. the other thing that is quite difficult to help people who've never been in a controlling group to understand is when they see a controlling group behaving in a way that's frankly out of order, like splitting up families and just saying to John's parents, you know, you can't speak to your son they don't realize it's, it's hard to explain 
that in that person in the brethren's mindset, they're doing the right thing. Yeah. And mm. I think that's very hard to explain to somebody that hasn't had their mind controlled by a very insular group. Um, when they take children off their parents in the manner they sometimes do it, most people would say that's horrendous. But they really believe they're doing the right thing. And to do anything to achieve those lengths is right. And that's a very hard thing to explain, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But in saying that, I mean, they might think they're doing the, thing, the the right thing, but the man at the top knows what he's doing. Oh, I think yeah. you're right. Yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah. I think yeah. you're right. Um, I, don't, I, think... I don't think he's brainwashed. No. 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 I think, and Jackie, you often bring this up, that whole faith in practice document yeah. um, is so exposing of this. Because yes. that's a document that the Bruce Hales administration wrote yes. and filed and yes. put it out there saying, these are the things that we agreed to follow. Yeah. Um, in there, they say, you know, there's no reason that an, that an ex-brethren member can't go to a funeral. Yeah. And yet, when it comes to practice, they don't even let us know when somebody passes away. Absolutely. So they've gone to such lengths to put a pretty picture or a pretty cover on what they are. And mm. yet underneath, uh, most of the people in there wouldn't even know that document exists. They don't know that document exists for sure. They don't know. Yeah. And they if they do know, know that they certainly don't understand the nuances of it. Um, and we were actually told by somebody inside the Brethren, formally told, that that document didn't mean the brethren may, had to make any changes. That document is just how the brethren see their faith. That is how they behave. Hmm. And, and apparently <laughs> we were told just recently that when that document was filed, there were a certain amount of copies distributed. And yes. at one point, real recently, those all those copies were instructed to be returned. Yeah. Um, because he doesn't want those copies circulating anywhere. In case yeah. people start to figure out that this is the picture that they painted. This is yeah. what they told the government they were going to do. Yeah. So we perhaps um, want to briefly explain to anybody that doesn't know, in the UK here, the Brethren's charitable status was challenged because the Charity Commission felt not only were they not there for public benefit, but they also caused harm. And in law, if a charity's harm outweighs their benefit, they can't be charitable. That's the bottom line. The public benefit um, issue they addressed by introducing the lovely rapid relief team um, <laughs> and the harm they addressed by agreeing this document that was written by brethren lawyers and by charity commission lawyers. And it was agreed literally about two days before the whole case was going to go to the high court. And in the high court, a lot of evidence from ex-brethren would have been aired in a public high court. But that was all avoided. Um the Charity Commission told us that they would expect and help the Brethren to change rather than take away their charitable status. One of the concerns expressed to the Charity Commission at the time was that most of the Brethren would never be told about this, this document that's been incorporated in the trustees of every trust. And the Charity Commission assured us that the Brethren told them all the Brethren had been told. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, when all the copies were retracted yes. and hauled back to Sydney, you know how you know how they were told. Yeah. They were told, told briefly and then they were retracted. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> obviously so, so indicative of a dictatorship though. Absolutely. Tell them what they need to know. I mean, Anne and Roz, you would have still been in when that document was incorporated because it was through the year of twenty fourteen. Yeah. Have you yeah, got any I left, memory? I left just before. Just before, Roz, do you remember? Yeah, yeah, we had to document all sorts of things. Like we, we were told any good deed we did, we had to document. So if we took the neighbours' bins out, we document it. <laughs> like I do remember that bit actually. Yeah, <laughs> so we're it laughing, was, but it was we had like this little thing. Each subdivision had a person that was appointed to collect in the good deeds that you were supposed to do, and you were supposed to write them down. And it was ridiculous. Literally. It was before, yeah. It was before they got the RRT up and running, really, wasn't it? Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. I remember, I remember my oh. second son, Scott, going and clearing the snow from the doctor's surgery path. And that was documented. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that was yeah. happening before, that was happening while the whole charity thing was going on before yeah. I left. It went on for a few years, I think, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I think it started in yeah. 2012 because that's what, when I listened to some of these ex brethren, um, talking and what they were saying i realized what they were saying was true and i was like hang on a minute it is true what they're saying and yet we were told oh they're just telling lies you know mm -hmm. and that sort of woke me up yeah yeah mm -hmm. so the when they had to document all their good deeds were they allowed to um mention if they cleared up any any dog or cat crap off the pavement <laughs> It because because uh, I'm coming on to the show with pets because I've just distracted them by, by this beautiful beautiful animal. And of course, no. it, it, it reminds me of the, the time when uh, pets were banned. Yeah, and it was actually just before yeah. I was born. But uh, pets were banned, and uh, I collected when I was writing the book quite a few stories of pets who were, that were destroyed. Yes, um, and um, when when I um, was mentioning the book on LinkedIn amongst the business community. Uh, that a lot of were very, very uh, horrified people to hear that the pets were treated that way, mm. you know. Um, and it's a horrible thing. To, uh, I, I, re I realized one day that, uh, and I don't know if I've never thought of this, that the same creator of, of me and you is the same creator of these animals. Mm. Yeah. So, so, so let those mm. let those pets alone. Stop, stop. Um, Shunning them, <laughs> nothing wrong. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, my my, my husband had a cat as a child and came home from school one day and the cat wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it, it's that it, because of this um, ministry. And you and you're right. Um, there's been rumours that um, some people are having animals now, really, um, but not as pets if they need them no, for no. farming. We is that is yeah, that yeah, correct? Yeah. Have I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually. I actually asked somebody inside yeah. after, you know, you know what they said at the end of that article in the sun. Yes. They said about pets and they said about uh, television and they said about makeup and trousers on women and television and all the rest. Anyway, I asked this person and um, she came back and said, pets are allowed if, yeah, a cat might be allowed on a farm. Right. Um, or, if somebody works in something rural, um, some people have, well, they would have had when, when I was in rabbits or something like that, if they were breeding them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and chickens, and chickens if you've got eggs. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but no, there, she said there's no animals in the house. Wow. Yeah. 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 And um, certainly as far as the, the, what they said about trousers and television and uh, contraception was the other thing that they said. Um, that they do now. She said that, you know, all that's rubbish. She said, yes, there's people that are secretly taking contraception, probably, mm. Mm. Um, and they just talk amongst themselves. And there's, there probably is young people listening to music, but if they were found out, they would be in trouble. Mm. And certainly not women wearing trousers as such. I mean, they wear these leggings with a skirt mm. on top. With a skirt. No. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Mm. They wear leggings and and quite short skirts now, and like long coats or cardigans, so it makes it look like they've got just leggings Trousers. on. Ah, yeah. oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Very borderline <laughs> behaviour, in my opinion. But so. which, which, <laughs> do, you, do you know what? You know, I could accept all that. Yeah, but just stop splitting up families. Yeah, stop ruining families. Yeah, yeah. stop. I the can harm. accept yeah. all that. Yeah, you know if that if that's fine. I was gonna yeah, I was going to say the other side of the coin, Anne, um, to to everybody. I grew up without grandparents because they were they'd left in 1970, and when I left at the age of 40, I met my grandma for the first time. Wow! wow. And what an absolutely gorgeous lady! I mean, how evil is that? to have mm -hmm. kept me locked away from her. I was never held by my grandma. I was never, you know, mm -hmm. and she loves me. She's accepted me into her life for these last three years. She was 98 when I met her. 
and wow. she's 102 wow. and she still wow. comes to the wow. door to wave us off i mean if that's not a gift from god mm. for these last four years i count every single minute i spend in her company because mm. she's so so special um how dare they yeah, block yeah. these poor these babies these children they don't have a choice whether they get to see their grandma mm. now what, i what, never had a, that choice i mean what were you told as a child what were you told i'm just sort of wondering what my grandchildren are told mm, what were you told interesting question i was i was told that they had they were against mr jim so they they didn't believe that mr jim was a pure man so therefore we had could absolutely no longer have any contact with them because they were condemned to the devil right they were evil evil people i mean she is so so purely still brethren in one sense she wears her dresses and she has her hair and she's never had a television and she's just exactly the same loving mm. lady and grandma that she always was mm. um to my mum and she's been denied all all of us you know and th th when my sisters left they all ran to her and she welcomed them into her life as a grandma again no reproach no nothing no absolutely yeah. not that says it all doesn't and I, it? Was, I was known as i don't know whether any of you knew but i was always known as wizzy mm. and so all my family oh, yeah, yeah. knew me as wizzy and so when i see grandpa I, she asks now who are you dear so i have to tell her wizzy <laughs> <laughs> and she knows she can place you then. Oh, yeah. I mean, she knows who I am. I mean, yeah. it's just so such a darling. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's an interesting thing, isn't it? Because we know, I mean, and I, I, I'm not, um, parents get split from their children, but there is that generational thing. And uh, it's every bit as heartbreaking and destructive. Um, grandparents yeah. are important people in little people's lives, mm. aren't they? and yeah to not have them is what we'll all fight yeah but well that's yeah. A, your story gives me hope Roz. you know because I, yeah. I i often say you know it may not be my children but it could be my grandchildren it could be your grandchildren i yeah. hope i hope it's before yeah. i'm 98 or whatever 97 <laughs> yeah. <but> yeah. <laughs> you'd still have your arms open for the man time. <laughs> still, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. hopefully <laughs> we will have caused a revolt by then so we're well that, that we're that's the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. open some yeah. eyes wake up and smell the coffee yes. yeah yeah so exactly. john you've written your book and um you've obviously put a lot of thought into this how would you um, i want to say how would you like to see it being resolved i mean it's a very complex situation isn't it because there's many people in the brethren particularly older people who you wouldn't want things to change for them because it would devastate them but how would you see that we could resolve this ongoing hurt and harm that's caused <clears throat> well i've come to believe that people have got a free will and mm. uh and the only thing in this world that works is love and if that's uh, the god that i was brought up to believe you know was a, a monster god a monster mm. that destroyed families and split up husbands and wives and children you know, that was the monster God that I was brought up to believe in. Uh, whereas now I believe God is the God of unconditional love and he accepts us just as we are, and no matter what mess. Mm -hmm. And I can cope with that. Uh, yeah. we, all, we all can. We all want loving. We all need to be loved. And so, <clears throat> so to, to, to try and alter people's minds and to change their minds and to um, change their, what their will is, I believe is, is control. It can't be done. People have a choice. And people can stay in their cult if they want to. That is their choice. But um, what one thing that can be done, I think, is just create awareness. And that was what these mm. videos are doing and these podcasts are doing. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, and it's great with the internet and YouTube and the, all the platforms that, that uh, there's so much exposure now to these cults, you know, chosen witnesses, Mormons, uh, there's so many of them. There's almost a 1,000 cults in the UK, literally. Yeah. 
I went mm. to see the list in a charity in London just before mm. COVID. And so that's one thing that can be continue to be doing is creating awareness. And then people, uh, if they want to turn their heads and, and have a look, uh, if they realise that um, it's not love what's happening, you know, I, I would say from my experience in the brethren, they are void of love. Mm. There, there's yeah. no love mm. there. It is just law based, mm. and the laws are just the laws from one man. It's not biblical law, even. Uh, I mean, it, it is laws from one man. Yeah. And so, if that's what people want, you know, have, have it. But but um, so creating awareness is 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 is, is about the only thing I can see uh, personally, and then people can make a choice. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. And I think the podcast that um, Cheryl and Carmen and Richard and Lane started and we'd like to all continue, it's not only creating awareness, it's also documenting stories. Yeah. And yeah. I think every person that's left the Brethren, every person that's had to fight their way out of a controlling group has a story of pain to tell. And it's not mm. that you dwell on that pain, but documenting the stories, otherwise nobody knows this is going on nobody knows no, what exactly. angst people go through so i think it's a valuable tool for doing that as well as raising awareness so we'll keep doing it <laughs> absolutely yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 well john thank you very thank much you. for coming on and um i have got and read your book and i did enjoy it <laughs> yeah and Anne, we're looking forward to yours too <laughs> And um, thank you, everybody, for the first podcast from the UK and um, hope to see you all soon. And again, um, if anybody wants to share their story or doesn't want to fight with Canada time zones and is in the UK, if you email the info, what is it, Carmen, info at Proton? Uh, info, get a uh, info, info dot get a life at Proton dot me. I should probably have yeah. rehearsed that before I came on, shouldn't I? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been a slick as Cheryl then, wouldn't I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the comments. Yeah. 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 Please email and we'll try to keep the awareness and these podcasts going. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good to see you all. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, John. Lovely to see you. That's Thanks, smart. everybody. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. See you later. Share your story or be a guest on the show. Email info.getalife at proton.me.